fish on. Fish on, that's a, one of my trout spoons. I think that's a gold one. Well, my dad wants a few trout for dinner, so if I get this guy in, he is, uh, he is going home. Oh, nice fish. Hey, there we go. Woo. Nice thing about that rubber net is you never have to worry about tangles. There's that gold trout spoon right there. He jumped all over that. And, uh, man, he's a battler. <laughs> Well, there's that trout, chunky little planter. Couldn't lay off that gold spoon. Speed spoons. Troll them, cast them, or jig them. If you want to get aggressive with trout, get a set of Kel Kellogg speed spoons and get your fish on. Available at the fishhuntshoot.com website. Hey folks, Kel Kellogg here. Now you know me, I run all kinds of different lures when I'm trout fishing. Sometimes I run threaded worms. Sometimes I run grubs, flies gulp minnows, spoons, plugs, um, minnow plugs, flatfish style plugs. I run anything and everything, you know, at different times. But day in, day out, um, probably my number one choice for trout is some sort of spoon, or at least some sort of spoon to start the day, because a spoon offers me a lot of versatility. Um, whether I'm up in the high Sierras at a lake where the fish feed on bugs, or I'm down in the valley, or in the foothills at a lake where the fish feed predominantly on bait fish like threadfin shad or pond smelt, a spoon just gives me a lot of options. There are spoons that I can run fast. There are spoons that I can run at a medium speed, and there are spoons that I can run at a slow speed. Um, but today, I, I really wanted to talk about spoon color in reference to matching bait fish. And as you guys probably know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've been reading my stuff in the Fish Differ magazine, you know that I spent about 10 years fly fishing exclusively. And I've taken a lot of that knowledge and I've applied it to my gear fishing. I've applied it to trolling. So when we're talking about spoons and trout striking spoons, is color a factor? Yes, color is a factor. But there are other factors that cause fish to strike. One, the trout, you know, they've got the lateral line. They can detect things moving through the water column. It's a sense we don't have, we don't understand. If I was a trout and there was a, a cheeseburger floating around over there, even though I couldn't see it, I'm looking over here, I would know it was there. I could feel it. I, I, that's just what they do. They know there's a bait fish up there. They, they know it's there. They could feel it. They go over there to investigate. Sure enough, there's, a, there's a, a pond smelt and they eat it and they're happy. So that's, that is, is you know, the vibration put out by a spoon, the tinkling of the hook against the action of the lure, the lure moving through the water, the vibration it's creating, the trout can home in on that. Um, so that's one factor. The silhouette, the shape of the lure also plays a factor. If a trout lives at a lake where, you know, 95% of that trout's meals our pond smelt, that is a long, slender minnow. You're gonna do better most of the time with a long, slender bait. So it's important to know what kind of bait fish are at this bait fish lake. Now, you might be at a place like Folsom where there are pond smelt and threadfin shad. So you just it just helps to do some homework and be aware of where you're fishing, what the forage base is, and try to match not only the silhouette of that bait, try to figure out how big the bait is. If the bait's this long, you probably don't want to be running a wee dick night. Conversely, if the fish are feeding on tiny little threadfin shad, you probably don't want to be running the largest size speedy shiner. You might catch some fish, but you're going to do the best by really dialing in and, and matching the hatch. And remember, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Matching the hatch doesn't mean an exact replication of the bait. I found over time, spoons that have, you know, the exact minnow replica decal on them, 
they don't fish that great. The fish aren't looking for minute detail. You're much better off with something that gives the impression of what they expect to see. Something that gives the impression of a pond smelt to a trout that feeds on pond smelt, that's going to go a lot further towards closing the deal than having an exact copy picture of a pond smelt on your lure. Um, that's why I like a lure with a big prominent eye. Shad have a big prominent eye, pond smelt have a big prominent eye, fish expect to see that eye, and the fish, they wanna, they wanna swallow the spoon, or the, the bait fish, head first so it doesn't get caught in their throat, and the eye helps close the deal. It gives them a clue where to hit the bait, what to do. They expect to see it, they see it, they grab your spoon, fish on, you're having a great time. Now, other factors play into this. Um, the conditions at the lake, is the water stained? Is it overcast? Is the sun high in the sky? And you know, a lot of this, I'm running by the seat of my pants. This is based on my own personal experience. And uh, I'm actually gonna use, well here's, here's, some, here's some of my humdingers, here are my small humdingers. Now, you're out on a lake like Shasta, like Folsom, maybe Rollins where there's a great, um, pond smelt bite going on right now, you definitely want something that imitates bait. And as several of these humdingers do imitate bait. Here's one of my, my favorites over the years. It's, it's, the, it's the chrome, or it's the blue, chrome back, it's got the eye, caught thousands of fish on this lure. It's a great minnow imitation. If you want something a little, a little subtler, you know, maybe the light level's a little lower, maybe you got overcast, maybe they're just not responding to that real bright chrome and blue, you might run something like this this brass back or gold back with the red on the front of it. Bottom line is, even though you're imitating bait fish, you're imitating the size of the bait fish, you've got a lure in the water that's putting out vibrations that's attracting you know, trout, it's pulling them in, it's getting their interest, you still need to think about the visual aspect of the lure, experiment and kind of match it to the conditions. So I've got out five of my speed minnows here and uh, I wanna talk a little bit about that. Now, when I'm imitating bait fish, I like metallic finishes, okay? But uh, we'll go with the philosophy that states, bright conditions call for a bright lure. And we're primarily talking about rainbow trout here because that's, that's the species of trout that is most accessible to most of us. It's the species of trout we target most often. So bright conditions, that calls for a bright lure. It's noon, you and I are out in the boat, maybe we got a little chop, we're trolling quickly, there's pond smelt in the lake. I want something that's gonna throw out maximum flash. What I'm gonna reach for? I'm gonna reach for a spoon like this. Chrome on chrome, just a straight chrome smooth finish. That's gonna give me maximum flash, maximum visual appeal, in bright conditions with clear water, clear to you know a little bit stained water. So that's gonna be my number one lure in bright conditions, chrome on chrome. Now, if I wanna if I wanna reel it in a little bit, if I think that is too much, too much flash, that's where the hammered lures come in. Okay, I'm gonna run one like this. This is hammered chrome. Now the back, get a lot of flash off the back but the flash coming off the front is just a little more subtle. It's a little more diffused. So if it's bright, I'm not getting them on the chrome, I'm gonna start experimenting, and my first choice to experiment with is gonna be the hammered chrome, simply because it reduces the flash factor just a little bit. Now, if I want something in that medium category, especially if the water isn't crystal clear, if the water's clear, I really like chrome. But if the water's got a little stain in it, it's got a little plankton in it, it's got that green color, green to brownish kind of hue, like the water you see at Lake Shasta, the water you see at Folsom. Lots of times, it might look clear, but if you look down in the water, there's a fair amount of color in the water. That's when I like to go with the non-chrome metallics, and uh, number one choice is gonna be copper or hammered copper. It gives off flash, but not nearly as much flash as a chrome lure. 
gives the fish a distinct silhouette while still putting off some level of flash, okay? Another one of those, those mid, mid flash choices is the gold lure. Just like that gold and red humdinger I just showed you, a gold, gold on gold, hammered gold. It's kind of a medium level of flash and it's giving the fish a strong silhouette. It's not just mirroring the background like chrome does, it's got some body to it. It's got a distinct shape, a distinct silhouette against a darker background, but we're still getting some flash. Now down at the far other end of the spectrum, that is where your dark lures exist. Your green spoons, your black spoons, or in this case, a hammered black chrome spoon. Now these are best when the water is, has a, you know, a fair level of stain in it or when the light level is minimal. Um, dawn, dusk, or very overcast days, I'm reaching for a black spoon. I'm probably going to run a black spoon on one rod and a, uh, a gold or green spoon on my other rod. These lures, in fact, if I hold these up to the camera right here, we don't have super bright sunlight. I'm going to hold these up kind of over my shoulder. You can see that this lure, the black lure, it gives a much firmer, a much more distinct silhouette against the trees back there then does this, kind of got to line it up so it's not on my face, then does this gold lure. So that's kind of what dark colored, I'm everywhere with these things, that's, that's what a dark lure does. It really gives you a distinct silhouette. When the light level's low, it's kind of, you know, the opposite of what you would assume. Low light level, flash is not that important. There's not enough light to really create flash, so you need a bold, distinct silhouette. Combined with those other factors, the fish expect to see a certain size of bait, a certain shape of bait. They're attracted by the vibration. They come in and they can see that black lure against the background real well. Now, when you got the high sky, the bright conditions, it's noon, it's one o'clock, you know, that's when you want your chrome lure. It's gonna have a maximum amount of sunlight around it to flash, to react with, and they're gonna pick that up real well. So that's kind of my philosophy. Let's recap here and I'll get out of here. I've been talking a lot. Imitating bait fish with metallic spoons, okay? Top end, high sky, bright conditions, clear water, chrome on chrome. A little subtler would be a hammered chrome or maybe a chrome and blue, something like that. Something that just kind of moderate the, the, the chrome, moderate the flash a little bit. Um, your middle choices are going to be your coppers, your golds, your hammered gold, your golden orange, something like that. Something that just kind of moderates the flash even more. We're moving into more of a distinct silhouette and less flash. Um, Stained water, semi-stained water, you know, low light conditions, broken overcast, your gold, your copper, those are gonna excel. Then your low light conditions, you want your black, you want your frog pattern, you want your olive green, you want your stuff that depends less on flash to be seen and more up on a distinct, bold silhouette against the background. Anyway, that's kind of my philosophy. Your mileage may vary and remember, Confidence means everything. But uh, we're gonna be talking more and more about this upper level stuff, about lure selection, about speeds, about colors, those kind of factors. And if you go out there and you have a plan and you fish systematically and you have a plan A, B, and C, and the, the A, B, and C encompasses various speeds, various colors, you're gonna quickly be able to assess what's going on on the water and you're gonna be more effective day in, day out. You're gonna catch more and bigger fish and that's what the Fish Hunt Shoot Channel is all about, helping you catch more and bigger trout every time you're on the water. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. Check out our store at uh, fishhuntshoot.com and uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell, man. You'll get an alert every time I post a video and we can talk fishing every single day. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'll see you out on the water right here on YouTube. I've been meeting more and more people out in the field and uh, always get fired up when I do. Anyway, you guys have a great day. I